بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم We greet you on this the 25th day of the month of Safar from my home in Trinidad with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and we return to that ominous prophecy of Prophet Muhammad Allah's blessing be upon him You may be a Hindu and listening to this video, or a Jew, or a Christian, or a Buddhist. You must know what our Prophet said, and it is coming to pass. Only, only a true Prophet could speak like this and prophesy. That the time is coming when one man will have to maintain 50 women. This is the same man who said, the time will come when women would be dressed and yet naked. Yes, I traveled in Pakistan two years ago. The same Pakistan which is being demonized left, right and center. And in five months of travel in Pakistan all over the country, I never saw the leg, exposed leg, of even one woman. Yes. And you leave Pakistan and you go out into other parts of the world and that's what you see, women are dressed and yet naked. Our Prophet said that. He said women will dress like men. Why? Because they want to assume the functional role of men in society. Let me repeat that for the feminist revolution. He said that women would dress like men. They'll have Working clothes which are masculine and cut. Working clothes for women which are masculine and cut. Women will dress like men because they want to assume the functional role of men in society. And he said that men would dress like women sometimes to attract another man and sometimes because they are abandoning their functional role as men in society. These are prophecies of a prophet. But we are concerned today with this special one. And again, we make an appeal to the scholars of Islam. We are begging you, when you go on the member, why don't you quote this hadith, this prophecy, and comment on it? I have been traveling f extensively for 50 years now around the world for 50 years. I started traveling when suitcases, valise, the suitcase had no wheels in them. You had to lift them up by hand. That's when I started. You couldn't find a single suitcase or valise with a wheel. That's when I started traveling. And uh, I, in my experience now by traveling is that there's a huge number of women, single women, who cannot find husbands, who cannot find those who can maintain them and guard and protect them. And so how do we respond to that? My first response was given in the previous video, that we have to collect zakat, we have to collect sadaka to help those who are in the greatest state of distress. One sister wrote to me, she was in such distress with no one to help, she was even about to leave Islam. She was a convert to Islam, about to leave Islam. And Alhamdulillah, we were able to find zakat for her and she's able to get some relief. And now she's so proud to be a Muslim. Praises be to Allah. And so now, in this video, we want to return to the solution that the religion of Islam has, the same religion which came with Moses, Nabi Musa, I'm the same religion which came with Jesus, Nabi Isa, the same religion which came with Muhammad, Nabi Muhammad, it's the same one religion from the Lord God. And what does this religion have to offer? to solve the problem. The modern Western world has so transformed the Christian Christianity that today's Christian says that the Christian religion is monogamous. 
that Christianity says a man must have only one wife. That's not the religion of Jesus. <laughs> not at all. That's not the more religion of Moses. That's not the religion of David and Solomon. They all had more than one wife. That's not the religion of Abraham. They all had more than one wife, all of them. And you telling me that Christianity is monogamous? No, no, <laughs> that's the Antichrist who created that religion. The Antichrist has brainwashed you into this monogamy. The one religion with the Lord God does not have monogamy. And so the first solution to the problem of one man having to maintain 50 women is found in plural marriages. And uh, prior to the revelation of the Quran, there was no limit to the number of wives that a man could have. In the previous revelations which came down to Jesus, to Moses, but in the revelation which came down to Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, Allah placed a limit. For the first time in history, there is now a limit to the number of wives you can have, and the limit is four. If you have a problem with that, well, why don't you argue with the Lord God on Judgment Day? Tell the Lord God you're wrong, and wait to see what the Lord God will do. Pick you up and throw you into the hellfire for your arrogance, your stupidity. He who created you from a drop of sperm, and you have the audacity to argue with him? Yeah? <laughs> so the Lord God in the Quran has said, that there's a limit up to four wives. And if a man has the means to maintain four wives, then he, should, he has a duty to, uh, to marry. A, a woman has a right to a husband. A man does not have a right to a wife. A man has a duty to marry. While she has a right to a husband, he has a duty to marry. This is not a pleasure trip. This is not a favor. It is a duty. You have a duty to marry her. But when you marry her, you cannot diminish the standard of living of the first wife to maintain a second or a third. If you don't have the means to maintain equity, between your wives, then Allah says, marry only one, only one. So this is a warning. But there are many Muslims, particularly in the Arab world, who have met several wives, yeah? And they're maintaining them. And these women, therefore, have a husband to take care of them. Uh, but what about when a man does not have the means to be able to maintain a second and a third wife or a fourth wife. The same standard with the first wife. What happens after that? The Quran has declared, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمَ لَا تَعَدِدُوا فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتَ إِمَانُكُمْ This is Surah to Ali Imran that if you fear that you will not be able to be just in your relations, your economic relations with your wives, then stay with one. And in addition to that, you can take them not as wives of nikah, but wives as medical yameen. This is the Quran. So who or what is a medical yameen? In order to understand the Quran, the first place you go is to he who was sent to teach the Quran. So would you kindly be quiet and let the Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, let him explain the Quran before you jump up on the table? The Makarkas of Egypt sent a gift of a slave woman to Prophet Muhammad 
And we all know her name. She was, her name was Maria, and she was a Coptic Christian. And she was an extremely beautiful woman. What did the Prophet do when this woman arrived in Medina as a gift to him? What did he do? Did he decline to accept the gift? No, that's not true. Did he free her from slavery and then propose marriage to her? And she now, as a free woman, could either choose to accept or to decline. Reject the offer. And she knew I want to go back home. Did he do that? Answer me. Did he do that? The only way he could have a contract of marriage or nikah with Maria is if he, number one, he frees her and she's a free woman. And then he proposes marriage to her and as a free woman, she has the right to either accept or reject. No, he did not do that. But she was a wife. Maria was his wife. No Muslim will differ with me. Maria was his wife. She was one of the Ummahat al-Mu'minin. One of the mothers of the believers, meaning after the death of the Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon No one can marry her. So in what capacity did he establish marital relations with her? In fact, she gave birth to a baby. And that child's name was Ibrahim. Oh, yes. So he had sexual relations with her without marriage. This is what our prophet did. If you don't like it, you must, con you must argue with him on Judgment Day if you don't like that. But I'm telling you what happened. He had sexual relations with her without a contract of nikah or marriage. But she was his wife. There is only one other way from the Quran that he could have sexual relations with her. Only one. And that is that she was his milk al -yameen. If our Prophet took a woman as his milk al -yameen, then it becomes a sunnah to have a milk al -yameen. Do you differ with me? Is there anyone so so foolhardy to differ with me that if our prophet took Maria as a milk al -yameen, then it becomes a sunnah to have a milk al -yameen. So who then is a milk al -yameen? Answer, a milk al -yameen is a wife, not a concubine, not a girlfriend, not someone that you spend one night with and then you discard her. A milk al -yameen is a wife. But she's not a wife of Nikah. In the contract of Nikah, you have a proposal of marriage from the side of the boy. And when that proposal is accepted from the side of the girl or her guardian, in the presence of witnesses and the dowry is agreed upon and given, then all that remains is a sermon, the marital sermon, a marriage sermon, and the marriage is over. Let me repeat that. In a contract of nikah, you have a proposal of marriage from the boy to the girl. If the proposal of marriage is accepted by the girl or by her wedi, and the dowry agreed upon is given, and this happens in the presence of witnesses because it cannot be secret, then all that remains is a ma marriage sermon to be delivered and the marriage is over. Then what happens in the case of a milk al -yameen? 
in order for us to recognize that this is your military, I mean, today when there is no more slavery, my view, and I can be wrong, this is my view, I'm offering it, and you must comment on it, and if you say that I am wrong, then you must show integrity and tell us what is right. How can more than 15 verses of the Quran on the subject of milk al yameen become obsolete and redundant because there is no more slavery in the world, legal slavery? Answer me! Don't write, run for a hole in which to hide. Show integrity. This is absolute truth in the Quran. The Quran has absolute truth. Absolute truth is eternal and universally applicable. Absolute truth can never become obsolete and redundant. I have the courage to say that. Do you also have the courage to say that? Well then, if there are more than 15 verses in the Quran on the subject of milk al yameen and if these verses are not to be ever considered to be obsolete and redundant, inapplicable in the world today, then tell us how do we apply them. If I am wrong, then tell me what is right. If I am wrong, then tell me what is right. My view is that in this abnormal situation that we now have, that a woman who needs a husband cannot get a husband, has the freedom to offer herself as a milkal yameen to a man of her choice. In the case of nikah, the man makes a proposal of marriage. But in the case of Milkel, I mean because she is a free woman and she is offering herself because she cannot find a husband. So the proposal or the offer must come from her, not from him. And if he accepts the offer of Milkel, I mean, and uh, when she makes the offer, you don't need to have witnesses present. But when he accepts the offer of milk al yameen, you must have witnesses present, at least two witnesses, because it has to be a public event, not private. And once he has accepted the proposal of milk al yameen, and the offer of milk al yameen, and he has done so in the presence of witnesses, there is no marriage ceremony anymore, no marriage sermon anymore. There is no dowry anymore, not at all. She is now his wife. There's no need for a written contract. There's no need for a written, written contract for nikah as well. The nikah is valid without a written contract. So the milk al yameen contract is valid without a written contract. So now she is his wife in the presence of witnesses, but she is not his wife of nikah. She must not be kept in secret. You must not live like a rat. Show respect for the woman. Take her out into the sunshine. Let her walk with dignity. Let her be recognized as your wife. That's right. That's the way to treat her. She is in every respect, she is your wife. As your wife of, wife of Nika, she is in every respect your wife as a military man, except that you do not have an obligation to maintain her equitably with your wife of Dika. You just maintain her to the capacity that you have to maintain. And if you die, she does not inherit from you. But if you have any children with her, 
the children of the milk al yameen have the same legal status as the children of the wife of nikah i hope i've explained the subject adequately now i'm waiting for a scholar who has the time and the inclination not only to write an essay to me and send it to me no 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 that you write and publish on the subject take all the verses of the quran on the subject explain them and show how the verses of the quran on the subject of milk and yameen are applicable in today's world when slavery is now abolished i pray that this video will bring some clarity to the subject and my critics will show some integrity if you say i am wrong then tell us what is right tell us how to deal with 50 women to be maintained by one man show me the answer when they are young women they don't need only food and clothing and shelter when they are young women they need biological satisfaction as well otherwise they can fall ill a young woman can have mental problems if she does not have a man to offer her satisfaction for her biological needs so if you say i am wrong then come forward and tell us what is right thank you wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh